Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah today we're going to encourage each other to do dua or supplicate. We've spoken a lot about supplication, but what we're going to talk about today is how to apply what we talked about, how to make our hearts crave to comprehend that our prayers or our dua will be accepted in these blessed days inshallah. And I'm going to pray or supplicate with all my energy, with all my heart, and I'm reassured, reassured that my dua will be accepted. So let's live with the Quranic verses and the hadiths. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him, Is our Lord afar so we call on him? Or is he near so we converse with him, talk softly with him? The Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't answer him. But the answer descended from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 186. And when my servants ask thee concerning me, I am indeed close to them. I listen to the prayer of every supplicant when he calleth on me. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ What more guarantee do you want? What is the most difficult prayer in your life? The one you feel is absolutely impossible. The verse is very clear. It's going to be accepted. Is our Lord afar so we call on Him? Or is He near so we converse with Him? Truly I am near. Do you feel that? فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ You hear the word near? There's a couple of things to note in this verse. The first thing, is this question too difficult for the Prophet ﷺ to answer? And why didn't the Prophet ﷺ answer himself? The answer for this question had to come directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will see that all the other questions that the Prophet ﷺ was asked in like, like Surah Al-Anfal for example, they asked the concerning things taken as spoils of war, say, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنَ الْأَنْفَالِ قُلْ Another verse, they ask thee concerning fighting in the prohibited months. Say, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ قُلْ Go tell them. The Prophet, Allah SWT is telling the Prophet, go tell them. قُلْ قُلْ لَهُمْ Another verse, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسَرِ قُلْ They ask thee concerning wine and gambling. Say, another one. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ قُلْ They ask thee concerning the new moon. Say, every time. The word they ask you is mentioned in the Quran. It's followed by the word tell them or say or go tell them. Accept this question. And if my servants ask about me, truly I am. I am near them. It didn't say go tell them, O Prophet Muhammad. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered directly. Truly I am. The relationship here is direct between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see how close he is to you? After hearing this verse, you still don't believe you know what, we're done with the lecture. In all truth, the whole lecture can be summarized in these two words. Truly, I am near. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I'm near. Go supplicate and make dua. And it's a done deal. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And if my servant asks about me, truly I am near. Do you feel the beauty of the word near? Do you sense this word as you raise your hands to supplicate and you say, Oh Allah, truly I am near. Closeness has happened between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And did you notice in this verse it says, I respond to the call of the one who supplicates. It did not say, I respond to the call of the believer or I respond to the call of the pious. No, the one who raises his hands and prays, whoever he is, is the one he responds to. So really, no one has an excuse. So you can't come and say, you know what, I'm not really that religious or my sins are so and so or I wore the hijab and took it off several times. I respond to the one who calleth on me. It's crystal clear. Your supplication is accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? If he calleth on me, what does that mean? It means that the ball is in your field. The whole matter is in your hand. So this matter of making dua isn't based on a certain time to be accepted. If you have something that you're dying for, raise your hands and ask for it now, pray for it now. We're on Laylatul Qadr, one of the, the winter nights, one of the nights that could be Laylatul Qadr, inshallah. And know that from making dua, it isn't based, uh, sorry, and know that from the signs of acceptance of your prayer is that when you feel your soul is longing to supplicate, it's a time of acceptance. I'm trying to make your hearts want to supplicate. And you'll see what I mean when you see Prophet Zakaria, peace be upon him. When he saw that Mary, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be, uh, um, be pleased with her, had risk or sustenance come to her. And he asked her in the verse in Ali Imran, قَالَ أَنَّ لَكِ هَذَا قَالَتْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدَ رَبِّي Every time he entered her chamber to see her, he found her supplied with sustenance. He said, O oh Mary, whence comes this to you? She said, From Allah. 
for Allah provides sustenance to whom he pleases without measure. You'll see the following verse says what? هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهُ There did Zakariya pray to his Lord saying, O oh my Lord, grant unto me from the, the a progeny that is pure. Zakariya, peace be upon him, said to himself what? This is a sign of acceptance of du'a. Why? Because he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings on Mary. So his heart moved that maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rush to him something that he had been deprived for for maybe 20 to 30 years. And that is not being able to have children. And there was no hope in having children. But when he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability in Mary's case, he made du'a. He supplicated and his prayer or his du'a was accepted. Subhanallah. So I'll keep trying to move your hearts today, inshallah. And maybe it will. And you'll feel an urge to raise your hands and supplicate. And it would be a sign of acceptance, inshallah. Make my heart move, O oh Allah. Make it crave to pray. Please, please, Ya Allah. And you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't set a certain time. He didn't say before Fajr dawn or after repenting. Although supplication, of course, is one of the, after repentance is one of the best times for um, the acceptance of supplication. No, he said, when he calleth on me, he left it to you. And if you look, you'll see that this verse came right after the verses about fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah. And as if the meaning is telling you that one of the things that guarantee the acceptance of your supplication is that you live till Ramadan and that you're fasting. But more, what if you're in the last 10 days or maybe you're in the night of power? Hmm, what would it be like? Is our Lord afar so we call on Him? Or is He near so we converse with Him? Listen to another verse in Surah Ghafir. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ إِدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Can you imagine this? You know when you ask a human being for something, they get tired of you and they try to avoid you and say, oh my God, he's such an ag. But Allah, Allah is the one asking you to ask him. And how about the one who doesn't supplicate or who doesn't want to supplicate? Look what the following verse that comes right after this, what it says. <laughs> but those who are arrogant to serve me will surely find themselves in hell, in humiliation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered the one who doesn't supplicate to be arrogant. Can you imagine arrogant with who? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to ask a question. Is there anybody in this entire world who is in need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is there someone who doesn't have any troubles in their life or any catastrophes? Uh, catastrophes? Is there anyone who doesn't have hopes? Anyone who doesn't have dreams they wish to accomplish or hope for something? So if you're in this position, the needy position, which we all are, why don't you raise your hands to God and supplicate? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you don't do that, then what? Then you're arrogant. And your Lord says, call on me, I'll answer your prayer. Would you supplicate or no? Would you put trust and faith or no? Would you say he will accept my supplication or do you still? are you going to still be doubtful? Make dua, guys, make a lot of dua. We're in the last 10 days of Ramadan. I want to know how do humans not run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they need, need him in every minute of their lives? How do you not supplicate? How do you run to humans and ask them to help you solve your problems when you have the greatest weapon in your hands? Raise your hands and say, Ya Allah, Ya Rabb. It's mentioned in the hadith that when a disobedient servant raises his hand to the sky and says, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, the angels withhold his supplication or his voice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't deserve to be heard. He's sinful, right? If he insists saying, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, Ya Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls upon the angels saying, My angels, till when will you hold my, ho my servant's voice from me? How can you withhold his voice from me? A disobedient servant, a sinful one. And he says what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Labbayka abdi, labbayka abdi, labbayka abdi. I'm at your demand, my servant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that to who? To a sinning servant. So what would he say to the one who's supplicating in the blessed month of Ramadan? And what would he say to the one who's seeking the night of power? Subhanallah. Believe me, supplication is such a great matter. And that's why you see in the Hadith al-Qudsi, he says what? يا عبادي كلكم ضال إلا من هديته فاستهدوني أهدكم O oh my servants, all of you are astray except for the ones I have guided so seek guidance of me and I shall guide you those who sin and have been saying I wish I could repent but can't what's your solution? supplication, dua is your solution those who say I've been dying to wear hijab for over 10 years now but don't know how to did you supplicate? A dua, ya gama. If you have a sibling and you've been saying he's so far from Allah, he does drugs, he's a totally lost case. Did you supplicate for him? My parents have nothing to do with religion. Did you supplicate for them? Did you see the word kulukum dal illa man 
all of you are astray except for the ones I have guided. Guidance is in his hands. So seek guidance of me and I shall guide you. I really feel I'm trying to explain something that is already explained. It's just so clear, subhanAllah. And then he goes on saying, Ya ibadi kullukum ja'a illa man at'amta fastat'imuni at'imkum. Oh my servants, all of you are hungry except for those I have fed. So seek food of me and I shall feed you. Ya ibadi kullukum a'arin illa man kasawta fastaksuni aksikum. O oh my servants, all of you are naked, except for the ones I have clothed. So seek clothing of me, and I shall clothe you. By the way, Anas ibn Malik, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, when he narrated this hadith, or whenever he narrated, he would get off his seat and he would fall down on his knees from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's glory. SubhanAllah. Ya ibadi, innakum tukhtu'una bil wa nahar wa ana akhfir al-dhunub jami'an, fastaghfiruni akhfir lakum. O oh my servants, you sin by night and by day, and I forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness of me, and I shall forgive you. Ya ibadi, law anna awwilakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum qamu fi sa'idin wahid fa sa'aluni fa a'tayta kulla wahid mas'alatu ma naqasa dhalik mimma indi illa kama yanqas al-mikhyat idha utkhil al-bahr. O my servants, were the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, were to rise up in one place and make a request of me, and were I to give everyone what he requested, that would not decrease what I have any more than a needle decreases the sea if it were put into it. Do you comprehend this? If the entire humanity, starting from Adam, peace be upon him, till the day of judgment, were gathered in a piece of empty land, and every single person raised their hands and asked the utmost thing they wanted. He wants a car, and he, she wants to get married, and someone who wants a mansion, and another longing for heaven. If all that were granted, it wouldn't decrease a thing from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns. Subhanak ya Rabbi.